after the massive success of the Disney Renaissance, Disney entered his second dark age, also known as the post Renaissance era. With the new millennium, Disney struggled with not one competitor, but three. Pixar, DreamWorks and Blue Sky Studios. They overtook the market with their new CGI movies and Disney tried to hold on to traditional animation but was overshadowed by the newer technology. When Disney finally turned to computer animation, it was with one of the worst movies they ever made, Chicken Little. Ugh. But it was necessary to master the new art. While they had a few hits in this age, most of the Disney movies of this post renaissance era were mediocre or forgettable. And when you are Disney, mediocre or forgettable is not good. Something you don't want to be. This is for me personally, hands down the worst Disney era by a landslide. Because I really think most of these movies missed the mark. Most of their movies failed to deliver on the box office too. And with critics. With Lilo and Stitch one of the few exceptions. Like always no sequels or package movies so no Fantasia 2000. Let's begin with the post renaissance age. Meet the Robinsons, we have finally found it, the worst Disney classic of all time that isn't a sequel or package movie. Meet the Robinsons is the only Disney classic I absolutely despise with a passion. I almost hate everything about this movie. It is incomprehensible at best, a boring mess at worst. I don't like any of the characters or the villain for that matter, the family members are all obnoxious. And while the story tries something in the ending, it all fails miserably. I don't like being this negative about the Disney movie, but this isn't Disney. It's like a lesser Sony or DreamWorks picture for me. Chicken Little isn't as boring as Meet the Robinsons, but most of the positives end there. The CGI they used in this movie is very ugly, 10 years after Pixar made Toy Story. Disney dared to put this into theaters. The movie is also very boring with main character Chicken Little, a plainfully dull protagonist. His father is also really terrible. The story changes into an alien invasion movie in the climax, for whatever reason, and keeps making bad decisions. While some pop culture references and the character of fish out of water can be funny, it's still a movie I won't watch again for fun. Let's be clear, there's a huge gap between Chicken Little and every other Disney movie, even in this age. Atlantis The Lost Empire is certainly not an objective bad movie. It just isn't a true Disney movie for me. This adventure flick tells the story of Milo Thatch who searches the sunken city of Atlantis. He meets Princess Kida, a forgotten Disney princess who is really good and has to save the city from Rourke. Rourke is maybe the first true Disney twist villain and he goes out with a bang, literally. This movie is too serious for me so I don't really like it all that much. But like I said, if you like this movie I can definitely see why, because Disney had ambitions and they were shooting for the stars. They should have made this in live action. The Emperor's New Groove is a really strange movie for me. Even in this Disney age, you can't take this movie serious. Emperor Cusco is a spoiled brat, in stark contrast with the naive and docile Pasha. Isma is a really funny villain and her minion Kronk is absolutely amazingly stupid. While Isma tries to murder Cusco, you don't have to worry, this movie plays it all for laughs. 
And to be fair, this movie is hilarious. This isn't a true Disney movie, it's a giant Looney Tunes cartoon with no songs. It's a parody of animated movies. While I certainly can enjoy this, I can't call it good either. Home on the Range is considered one of the worst Disney movies up there with Chicken Little. I myself do enjoy this movie, but it is indeed underwhelming. This movie tells the story of three cows who have to capture the cattle thief Alameda Slim to save their farm. This movie doesn't have any deep themes and the comedy is mostly like a cartoon. I do think most of the side characters are funny enough and Alameda Slim is a nice villain with his trademark yodeling. I don't have strong feelings either way for this movie, it just exists. I don't hate it, I don't love it. The last mediocre post renaissance movie before we start with the good ones is Dinosaur. Dinosaur is the first computer animated Disney movie and it looks okay. I can't call the movie awesome, but it is serviceable. It tells the story of Aladar the Iguanodon, who has to travel through deserts to find the Green Valley. And if that sounds derivative of the land before time, you are absolutely right. Many people call this movie dull, boring and lifeless. They just go through boring deserts, followed by hungry dinosaurs. I can agree that this movie is really cliché, and doesn't offer much for people who don't like dinosaurs, but if you like them, like myself, it has some things to offer. The Carnotaurs are really creative T-Rex stand-ins and the dinosaur designs are really good. Maybe not the best Disney movie, but a good enough dinosaur movie. Treasure Planet is one of the few Disney movies that became a box office bomb. It underperformed massively and that's a shame because it's great. Treasure Planet tells the story about Jim Hawkins going on a treasure hunt. It's not like other adaptations because this movie isn't just with pirates, it's in space. This science fiction movie has an awesome setting with wonderful great characters. The villain John Silver is also very good. He is an antagonist who isn't pure evil and gets a soft spot for our hero Jim. Jim can be annoying I guess, but I don't mind his teenage manners. It's the interaction between Jim and John Silver that makes this movie so great. But I also like the talking robot Ben and Morph the Alien. And Scroop is another great villain coming right out of a nightmare. Ugh. I really hope more people will see this movie because it's amazing. Lilo and Stitch is the most well-known post-renaissance movie and the most beloved. As a child I too was obsessed with Lilo and Stitch, but I think the movie has more flaws than we like to admit. Lilo is really irritating and she is a pain in the butt for her sister Nani. The core of the story however is good, the love between the sisters hits hard, years before Frozen was a thing. Stitch himself is of course the greatest character ever, he's funny and has a heartwarming character arc. The mixing of Hawaiian culture and space stuff is actually very good. The meaning of Ohana and the climax of the movie are incredible. I would like to put this at number one, but two movies did it better in this age. Bold is the last Disney post renaissance movie, a clear blueprint for the Disney revival after two horrible CGI movies. Bold looks good as a computer animated movie. The story is not too exceptional, but still great. Bold is a dog who thinks he's a superhero when he discovers he's just an actor in Hollywood. He has to find his way from New York City to Los Angeles. A road trip is always fun and the cat Mittens and Hamster Rhino are funny side characters. I would say Mittens is more than a sidekick, she is together with Bolt the core of the movie. The human characters are also good, it's a beautiful story with funny pageants and a nice final. The 
But I think Brother Bear is the best post Renaissance movie for sure, taking inspiration from the Renaissance. In Alaska, the Inuit Kenai sees his brother getting killed in a situation with a bear. He holds the bear responsible and kills the bear out of revenge, not knowing this creature is a mother with a young cub. Now the great spirits transform him into a bear, who has to learn the meaning of his actions while his other brother, Dinai, wants to kill him. It's a beautiful story. Themes like revenge and family are amazingly well executed. The young cub Coda is a very fun animal, like the Canadian moose, rut and toque. I see no flaws in this movie. It has more heart than most of the other post-Renaissance movies combined and a lot of humor and great songs. This is a classic you should watch right now. Yes, Disney tried to be experimental and new, like my new hairstyle. <laughs> but it didn't work. Next time we have the last era, the current age of Disney, the revival age. And boy oh boy, finally they're back at it. <laughs> See you then, bye.